Hi everyone, I'm Josh. We're here at the compost demonstration site about a week and a half after adding the burlap. Now we added the burlap for a couple reasons. One is to keep the snow off the pile and two, possibly help hold heat in the pile. So let's take a look. You can see here that the burlap did pretty well at keeping the snow off of the pile, which I'm very happy about. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take these off. We're just gonna shake them, just get rid of the snow. So it doesn't melt into the burlap and then subsequently into the pile. So we'll do that with that one and then so on and so forth with the rest of them. So we removed the burlap so we could check the temperature. Uh, just going based on visuals here, looking at the pile, not a whole lot's going on. Uh, the top is kind of dry, but the bottom is still pretty wet. That's all right, we'll keep it that way. And to check the temperature now, I have this three foot thermometer. This is really good for like really full piles that you can get the temperature in the middle because uh, that's where all the heat and all the action's going. So I'll angle it this way, try to get into the middle of the pile. That's where it'll be the warmest. And we're gonna see what happens. Well, temperature's staying at a pretty steady 40 degrees in the middle of the pile. About the same as the ambient temperature. Uh, about how the air is feeling right now. That's not terribly surprising. Uh, as we said before, it's not really a tall pile. There isn't a whole lot of mass in here to keep the heat in. And so not expecting it to heat up. Um, we'll see how it goes in the spring though, when we do fill this bin up a little bit more. Until then, we'll add more coffee grounds and food scraps. We just got more coffee grounds from the Taste New York store, about 40 pounds worth, two five gallon buckets. And we'll add that, put the leaves over it, cover it back up with the burlap and we'll be good to go. Now we're gonna cover this with leaves. Not as important to cover with leaves. I'm still going to for good practice and it makes it look nice if, you, if all you see is leaves. But the coffee grounds, they don't really attack, attract pests the same as food scraps do. And they're high in nitrogen, not as high as food scraps. So I don't need as many leaves. Um, we'll go shoot for more two to one ratio on this rather than like three to one with the food scraps. Okay, getting from the bottom of the barrel here. Again, we're mixing it around. We want to have thin layers with lots of contact, lots of surface area mixing between the greens and the browns. And I'll be right back. I got to get more leaves. I ran out of leaves in the bucket there. Luckily, we keep leaves on hand in plastic bags to keep them dry in the winter time. We also have a little uh, shed, kind of, well, we have pallet bins, not really a shed. We have pallet bins to keep them dry too and off the ground, so it'll last longer. Downsides, the bags tend to break, so if you can store them inside, that's the best option. But in our case, we don't have that, uh, uh, in our case, we don't have that available space. So we have to store outside in plastic bags like this. So that's our update with the burlap sacks. Uh, we found out that it does help keep snow off, which is wonderful. However, it hasn't really helped get the temperature up uh, past 40 degrees, which is about ambient temperature, which is what we expected. And that's totally fine. Um, so now I just have to go rinse these buckets out so we can use it again to collect more coffee grounds and more food scraps and continue adding to this pile. If you're looking for more information on composting, check out our website, ccebroomcounty.com. Oh. All right.